Good afternoon and welcome to Monday Mix uh, with me Ruth Benny from Top Schools. So this is a new segment that we're trying out. Um, we know that most of you are, are at home or so we thought four o'clock was a good time. Um, give us a thumbs up if four o'clock is a good time and if you think that there's another time you'd prefer also just, just please let us know. So this session uh, will run for as long as you have uh, juicy questions for me. So please go ahead and uh, type your questions. Um, nothing is off bounds. Um, if, if I really cannot answer it publicly, then, then I'll get back to you and answer that privately. Um, so please go ahead and type questions. And if you guys don't have any questions, this might be a rather short segment. Um, also, just please uh, mark your calendars for uh, May the 4th. Uh, we do our admission possible seminars. We usually do them um, throughout most of the year. Um, but we can't do them in person at the moment. So we're going to be running that on um, May the 4th at 7 p.m. And that's a more structured session which takes you through the whole process of um, admissions for, for your child. So how to choose the right school, understanding your preferences, your priorities, and the possibilities really for, for different school options. So if you are looking to go through that process this year, and you're looking for a spot, when I mean this year, what I mean is actually you're looking for a spot in August 2021. And uh, so that session's on May the 4th at 7 p.m. Now we had a few questions ahead of time. I was, I'm going to try as far as possible to organize the questions into um, sorts of categories. And please bear with me because my eyesight is is failing me. And if I put my glasses on, there's glare everywhere from, from the lights. Um, hi, Nora. Um, hi to Kanako. And hi, June. And um, thank you for your questions. And I'm going to have to put my glasses on. Um, so how do you choose between a local and an international school? Now, that's a whole huge topic in itself. And uh, we do run sessions on that. Essentially, what we do here at Top Schools is focused on international curriculum schools. Now, the reason I, I say that and not purely international schools is there is a technical difference, um, but we don't actually um, do anything with local schools. It's an entirely different kettle of fish. Um, I taught teachers in local schools for almost 16 years here in Hong Kong, so I do understand the local system very, very well. Um, but it's very, very different from an international or a private school. It is a really good question and we can run a separate session on that. Um, okay, in a nutshell, do you want your child to be educated in Cantonese? Um, if the answer is yes, let me just put that question up. This is the question that I'm answering. I'm learning, please bear with me. Um, if you do want your child to be educated predominantly in Cantonese, then local school is going to be the very, very best choice for you. Um, if the answer to that is no, then definitely local school is not going to be the best choice for you. That's a really, really simple way to start to understand where your preferences might be lying. Um, other things is often also the curriculum, but, but do start with this language issue. I hope that helps um, June for you to understand the difference um, between local and international schools. Um, if you have questions, please type them in the box, I'm trying to organize them into groups. Um, hello, Nora, this is a very simple question, um, or is it even a question? Um, probably, I, I guess what you're getting at is the um, requirement for international students in international schools. Um, there is a requirement for most international schools, but that's, remember at the beginning, I said that not all schools that appear to be international are actually international and some of them do not have any requirement for international students so it's a good thing to understand which ones do and which ones don't but on the other hand if your child is holding only a hong kong passport i would also say don't let that limit your options too much i mean don't let a little bit of competition put you off because actually we have a lot of success with um children with PRC and Hong Kong passports to get them into um, top tier international schools. So it's one consideration, but don't let that limit your options, at least not in the very, very beginning. Okay, so I've got some um, other questions that came in by email the other day. Um, we're having a lot of 
just a sec. We're having a lot of um, questions about withdrawals at the moment. Um, so if you have topical questions really about um, online learning, uh, whether or not you can withdraw, what is happening for your child in the coming August 2020, um, please go ahead and, and ask away. Um, is there a way, I'm not sure if there's a way for you to remain anonymous in, in these questions. If you're typing um, questions into the group, I'm having to get those from another source. So please do bear with me. Um, just a second. How are you finding the online learning? And um, well, I know that's a whole can of worms. Um, how are you finding the virtual admissions events? I've been tuning into a couple of them and I've, I've been putting some thoughts together actually. We'll run a poll in the Facebook um, group about whether or not you find these admissions events um, useful and maybe what the schools can be doing to improve them because we're definitely looking into that a bit more. I've seen some terrible ones and I've seen some pretty good ones too and, and everything in between. Um, so please ask, ask away if you have questions. Um, hello Dawn, so does top schools provide services about play groups as well? Of course, yes we do um, because as you may have heard me say before, as we often do say, if you don't know where you're going, you don't know how to get there. Um, so a number of uh, school organizations actually have kin kindergartens that are connected and they also have play groups that are connected. So ideally, if you are aiming for a primary school that has an affiliated play group, it makes perfect sense that you start in the play group. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't jump out and choose something else you know as as you go along but it provides you with that safety net where we see that really is problematic is in those sort of those trilingual play groups which do not feed into international schools um potentially a bit controversial but you know if if your home language is cantonese and your child is in a cantonese um, play group and then goes into a trilingual pre-nursery in a trilingual k1 that's very unlikely that your child will be able to develop the requisite language, um, English language proficiency for an international school. So definitely something to, to bear in mind. We provide something called the first steps plan for um, children under the age of one. Because of course, once, you, once your child has turned one, play group is neither here nor there. You're already actually planning now for pre-nursery. So I hope that answers your question, um, Dawn. Um, hello, Angela. Hi, how are you? Um, have schools suffered? I wrote a piece in the SCMP about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, permanent closure. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple that have um, bit in the dust, as it were. We've seen British Council that announced that they will no longer be operating, as well as Eaton House Kindergarten, um, Baby Buddies, um, just a play group, also actually a kindergarten. I'm hearing some real horror stories about Sia Rogers International School at the moment. If you're a parent there, and we're putting an advocacy group um, together to, to talk to EDB about this particular school. Um, on the whole, of course, you know, the schools are in pretty good shape, that the larger, well-established top tier schools. Um, but certainly things are different this year. So, you know. One thing that we've been saying ever since we were established over eight years ago is, is don't feel that the competition is insurmountable. You know, don't be afraid of the competition. And, and this year is, is a perfect case in point. There still is a lot of competition in, in, in certain pockets, but I think it looks very different from previous years. Um, so thanks for your question, Angela. Hope you're doing well out in Taipo. Um, okay, I've got lots of questions from um, June. Do we have any questions from the group? I think I'm getting them all. Okay, let's go to, um, hi June. I do, we publish um, a list of which private schools produce biliterate English Mandarin um, produce. They don't produce biliterate children. They offer a program that potentially um, engenders the production of biliterate children, um, if I can say it that way. Um, it, of course, it very much does depend on your home language environment, but but we do publish that list and we'll post it in the comments um, later on. Thank you for your question. Um, similar question. 
schools with strong Mandarin programs. This is probably our number two question, number one. Uh, yeah, it's right up there. It's one of the most, um, I mean, look, just sharing personally for a moment, my kids are old, um, older, they're 13 and 14. I put my children in uh, Mandarin playgroup, kindergarten and um, primary school all the way. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but my Mandarin isn't isn't all that great. My Cantonese is, is, is half decent, but, but neither myself nor my husband speak any Mandarin at all. Um, so we, as a family, are at a very, very strong um, disadvantage. Did they flourish without a lot of home support? I don't know, because we absolutely did provide a lot, a lot of home support. Now, if you have Mandarin in your home, I expect you, know, you can balance that. In our experience, those schools that are essentially, if you think about it, essentially they're almost doing double. They're having to teach in English and in Mandarin. So, so the requirement for the children to be completing homework, for example, is more than in a, a monolingual English language school. So I would say this, Wendy, if you're looking for your children to be absolutely bilingual and probably biliterate, or possibly trilingual, you're gonna have to put the work in, okay? I, I think that that's all that there is to it. It doesn't come easy. There will be a lot of um, a lot of tears, um, but it's worth it. And and you know, you you as a family consider the end point. You know, what what if it didn't work out for us? What if um, our child our child's Mandarin isn't all that great? How would we feel about that? What would that mean for our child's um, opportunities later in life? And, and of course, def definitely children can pick it up later in life. We have a lot a lot of I'm sure a lot of you are. are um, proof of that and um, thank you for your question Wendy um, Nora oh my gosh okay thank you for all your questions thank you for listening I'm so glad that um, you're interested is um, four o'clock a good time give us a thumbs up if you like four o'clock and if you think that another time would be more appropriate we're very happy to to listen to your um, suggestions hi Andrea what what do I suggest to do to parents of, to do to an 18 month old girl? Do you know what? First thing is just relax, just relax and enjoy your toddler. Um, listen to our admission possible session next, is it next Monday, May the 4th at 7 p.m. That's really the better session where we provide an overview of, of all the different systems, you know, choosing local international, um, you know, 18 months, my maths is shocking, but I'm going to guess, I'm going to, your child will be entering pre-nursery in August in the coming year. So um, take a few months to get your heads around it all and come August, September, you should be putting in applications for pre-nursery. So attend that session is my best advice. Thank you, Andrea, for your, um, for your question. Um, Nora. If I put this up, it's going to completely obliterate my face. But here we go. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You don't want me to show that. Hold on. Nora, can I can I get back to you about that later? That looks kind of complicated. And um, I, I will probably need some time to, to process that. So do we have any more questions? Um, thank you for everybody who's tuned in. Um, thank you, Angela and Andrea and Nora. Please give us a thumbs up and a like. You can click to get notifications of our Facebook Lives. Um, they, we put a link in the description of how you can do that. And we're going to be doing this every single Monday at 4 o'clock, except public holidays. And if I'm not available, I'm going to have a colleague step in for me. So shall we? I can't see any new questions at the moment. So hopefully that that was a little bit random and please give us tips of, on how we might be able to improve and we will be very happy to to take on your suggestions i've just seen your question jamie and i can't really do that publicly but i'm happy to do that privately in terms of talking about specific schools of course it's really hard for us to do that without knowing more about your family and that's why we do what we do we have a very very thorough process that involves meeting you 
several times, obviously, meeting your child is, is an extremely important part. Because when somebody says to me, can you recommend schools that, that are good at Mandarin? OK, I can do that. But of course, that's a, a, a rather limited list of schools. Which ones should you apply to on that list? I really couldn't say until we as a team know more about you and your family. So we do have a very thorough process. It works. Uh, we have 100% success rate in placing children into um, the parents' uh, top choice schools. So please do get in touch. If you're in the very, very fortunate position, Jamie, of having two offers from the two schools that you mentioned, we also do offer a decision discussion, which will give you an objective view on which one to choose. And we would like you to approach us before you need to put down money at either one of the schools so that obviously you minimize any loss. Um, hi, Jonathan. Thank you for your comments. Um, I really appreciate that. This has been super fun. I think we're going to end it before it gets too long. And um, so we'll do it again next Monday. And for now, I'm going to try and do something. This. Um, thank you very much. Okay. See you next Monday. Bye, guys.